So, this is the conclusive chapter or module on this uh, NPTEL video course on electronic systems packaging. So far we have seen various modules and lectures in those modules covering various aspects of electronic systems packaging. We have covered a wide variety of topics starting from the basic semiconductor fabrication to system level issues. So, this is basically sensitizing all the participants in this course to the rudimentary topics of electronic systems packaging that looks very essential for the industry today. As we have seen over the lectures that there are a wide variety of topics that can be covered in electronic systems packaging because this is multidisciplinary disciplinary in nature. What we will now do is to quickly recap the various topics that we have covered and summarize the takeaways from each of these topics and conclude this final lecture. Firstly, in the beginning we have tried to define what is electronic systems packaging. If you recall, packaging is every technology required between the IC and the system. Packaging is just not a study of interconnections, it is much more than that. And we have tried to look into the various technology that dominates uh, from the IC level to the system level. And we have also seen the importance of various packaging methodologies and concluded that without a proper packaging methodology, a manufactured die or an IC is no good. Therefore, packaging is basically done at three levels, chip level, board level and system level. We have seen in the beginning that it is very difficult to pinpoint and write a definition for packaging because we have to cover various technologies that are required between the IC and the system. And now as a beginner you would have seen that packaging is just not about copper interconnections because when you talk about various levels of packaging, the IC level, the board level and the system level, it is much more than just the copper interconnects. The performance of these interconnects are dependent on various factors, material issues, process issues and so on, besides electrical and thermal issues being of prime importance in the reliability of an electronic product. Now, if you want to look back and uh, try to see what we have um, digested in terms of the material in the initial lectures, we have tried to define what is microelectronic systems packaging and why is microelectronic systems packaging important. The important points that are covered here in this slide are that every IC and device has to be packaged. Now, packaging in some sense controls the performance of systems, computers for example, okay. small systems, handheld products, large systems like servers and uh, various uh, power electronics systems which are large in size, but where packaging also plays a very important role in terms of choice of components, the device assembly and so on. Packaging controls the size of consumer products which is uh, very true today as you are witnessing major um, evolutions in terms of new products that are seen in the market today and technology revolution in terms of uh, miniaturization, feature size diminishing and a host of new materials being used even 
in the consumer electronics arena. Reliability of packaging is very important and together with the choice of materials, the right and appropriate material, we have to as designers look at uh, cost of electronic products because when you look at product design at the industry level, you have to meet the satisfaction of the consumer or the end customer in terms of um, reliability and at the same time cost effectiveness. Packaging is a requirement in every industry today such as automotive, communications, computer industry, consumer electronic goods, um, medical uh, equipments, aerospace, strategic and military sectors. You would recall this slide which we discussed about the semiconductor manufacturing process or the chip manufacturing process. Although this segment in exclusively does not belong to the uh, electronic systems packaging concept, but when we talk about IC packaging, it is always better to know the IC manufacturing process sequences including the materials and the equipment issues that are associated with wafer fabrication because there is always uh, a great technology uh, change happening every 2 years or every 5 years in terms of packaging uh, technologies that are being available for the end customer. Therefore, uh, we will talk about wafer fabrication which is the front end process and we have seen how issues like the size of the wafer and the dimensions or the technology line width that is being used by the designers uh, for the chip manufacturing becomes very critical. So, you can see the front end process starts with the mask manufacturing and then the wafer uh, from the ingots being sliced to the required dimensions and then the allied processes like selection of the photoresist material, the photolithography process as such which is uh, the most challenging part in the front end process. Then comes the diffusion or implanting dopants into the structure of the base material like silicon or other compound semiconductors and then finally um, getting the wafer done after the required uh, doping process and the planarization processes, inspection and measurement and then comes the test assembly and packaging, the back end process which finally results in the first level interconnect typically a wire bonding process and then getting a known good die KGD as uh, you are now aware of. The industrial and medical systems um, or product packaging in general involves various sectors. Now, the major component could be computer and business equipment, then comes the communications uh, systems engineering, then comes the consumer and industrial and medical systems, military and automotive being the other areas where um, the products go into a large consideration about electronics packaging systems design involving electrical and thermal. Therefore, finally, we try to summarize what is electronics packaging and we defined in such a way that it is um, understood by the various multidisciplinary groups that work in packaging. Science and art of providing a suitable environment to the electronic product as a whole to perform reliably over a period of time. So, this could involve design issues because if you look at an electronic product, it starts with design, electrical test, fabrication, um, then comes the board fabrication, assembly, reliability measurements and so on. 
The major functions of electronic packaging are signal distribution, power distribution, heat dissipation that is cooling issues of uh, electronic equipment, protection mechanical, chemical and electromagnetic and the package must function at its specified performance level. This, so, this takeaway from this slide is that um, it is difficult to find a definition for electronics packaging in a textbook, but if you look at the product from the product standpoint, we are interested in the reliability of a product and therefore, the providing the required um, impact on the product would mean you have to consider various issues from design to fabrication to assembly and then testing. This picture um, in the initial lectures would have introduced you to the levels of packaging and level 1 involves chip level interconnects, level 2 involves board level interconnects and level 3 uh, would be the system level. But if you dig into the sub areas, then you try to define level 1 as integrated circuit, then you have the starting wafer material, you have the multi chip module coming out of the single chip modules that are being generated at the first level. Then comes the printed circuit board okay, and then many printed circuit boards can be assembled on a motherboard and these are the daughter boards and this is again the level 3 packaging and then you have the system level packaging. But typically broadly you can talk about chip level, board level and system level technologies. We have uh, focused a lot in this course on printed wiring boards which is the second level a uh, second major level of packaging that we can consider because today printed wiring boards themselves can be called as systems because they perform system functions. It could be analog, digital, um, it could be mixed signal, high bandwidth, um, there are other issues like EMI, EMC built on the substrate and making it uh, compatible with various operational frequencies and so on. So, the purpose of a printed wiring board is to electrically interconnect all the components, mechanical support to the components is provided by the PWB, it powers up the circuit and dissipates heat generated by the components. Accordingly, the materials have to be selected. Now, this as you recall would be an example of system level integration in a handheld product, a miniaturized product that is globally very um, sensitive in terms of market upheaval and so on, uh, the mobile phone because the percentage of mobile uses across the globe is very high. Therefore, features like uh, the size, the shape, the color including the mechanical packaging aspects and the cost become integral to the mobile uh, industry, mobile phone industry. This picture will give you uh, the kind of complexity involved in the system level integration in a cellular phone. Uh, there are various segments as you can see, there is for example, the camera circuit, the memory circuit, plug in memory card, outer interface circuit, power supply to the system, uh, transmitter receiver circuit very important and all of these critical areas uh, require a lot of design considerations in terms of package choice, uh, simulation from the electrical standpoint as well as thermal. Now, this is basically um, a quick bird's eye view of how we started with a wafer or an ingot to get a wafer and then the doping process to get the required electrical functions and then formation of the gate and the metal plating that is required at the gate. Then comes the testing to qualify the die as a known good die and then comes the packaging. So, this is uh, in this six pictures trying to uh, 
uh, present in a nutshell the front end to the back end process. We have seen what the first level interconnections are. They are wire bonding, tape automated bonding and flip chip bonding. So, you now know what is a wire bond. There will be gold or aluminum wires that will connect the bond pad on the die to the bond pad on the substrate. Similarly, you will have lead frames in a tape automated bond that will be available on a plastic polyimide tape and then you have the die coming here and aligning with a, a first level bonding or inner lead bonding and then you have a outer lead bonding here that will complete the first level interconnect. Flip chip is um, very current although it was invented by IBM way back in 1963. The usage of flip chip today in terms of being part of a BGA or a CSP is uh, highly market sensitive. There are large volumes for flip chip manufacturing and usage and here you can see a flip chip um, illustration where the solder bump in the die is um, placed on the substrate registered properly and this is the bare die and then the first level interconnection is done by thermocompression bonding or by reflow process. So, these are the common first level interconnections. Once again I want to emphasize here that flip chip is being used in many packages today we have seen that and how substrates and the solder material that are being used for the bump formation become very critical in the functioning of the flip chip in a package. A flip chip can be used without a package directly on a board or a flip chip can be part of a BGA system which is a plastic packaged or it could be ceramic packaged. So, you can see a figure here where there is a die and then there is a bump and you have underfill encapsulant being used in the space between the die and the substrate. So, this is the substrate it could be an FR4 or FR5 material depending upon the uh, specifications of your product and then underfill encapsulant uh, is used um, when you use a, a bare die on a board to prevent the thermal mismatch between the silicon die and the organic substrate so that the reliability is increased. So, in, in our course we have emphasized uh, the use of uh, flip chip today in uh, current products and design and underfill becomes a very important uh, material um, for researchers and the volumes are increasing in terms of usage. So, underfill is basically a non-conductive adhesive joining surface of chip to substrate. It protects the bumps from moisture or other environmental hazards, provides mechanical strength to the assembly and then it takes care of the CTE mismatch that I talked about between the silicon die and the organic substrate and it is thermally conductive takes care of the heat issues and electrically insulating. If you look at the growth or evolution of packages, we have spent a, uh, a large amount of time in looking at the various packages in this particular course. Uh, we talked about peripheral packages and we also talked about area array packages. So, these are the uh, different varieties of packages that are still available in the market. So, we started with the dip package, we have moved to QFPs and then you can look at the pitch, it is about 0.3 mm um, convergence. If you look at other technologies, area ray plastic technologies, BGA, plastic BGA and then we now have what is known as a chip size or chip scale package technology and then the wafer level CSP um, 
where the pitch is 0.5 mm or less. So, a CSP um, can be done at the wafer level which means that you can package the dye and then singulate it later from the wafer compared to the conventional process of singulating the dye and then packaging the individual dye. As you can see in this picture here, a conventional package is you have the wafer, then the dicing is done and then it is packaged individually whereas at the wafer level the packaging is done at the wafer and then um, the packaged dyes are then singulated. So, this is one of the most current technologies the wafer level packaging or wafer level CSP technologies and there are a lot of benefits as you have seen better signal integrity, lead free solder bumping possible, nano interconnections and then um, integrating this process for uh, the fabrication of uh, MEMS devices and interconnects. Although the volumes are the less, uh, it is definitely a big step towards uh, nano interconnections and small devices. This is a glossary of the single chip packages that we have seen. We have seen a host of through hole components like SIP single inline package, DIP dual inline package and you can have plastic packages or ceramic packages. You have a look at the pin count and the pitch initially the pitch has been very high 2.54 mm and then today we are talking about 0.5 mm or less in the case of CSPs. Then comes the other classification of surface mount devices again you have various uh, classifications like small outline package, leader chip carriers, quad flat packs and so on. In the area array package you have a pin grid array and then the ball grid array package, then the column grid array and chip size package. So, you have different um, varieties of BGA packages that could be used based on your application and electrical requirement. BGA is the workhorse of the industry as I have mentioned, you can build high density designs or system level printed wiring boards with BGAs. Now, very common the volumes of manufacturing for BGA are very high. Plastic BGA again is um, highly used by the industry today and typically you will see a multi-layer organic substrate with high pin count and uh, they could be used in uh, the functionalities like uh, digital signal processors, uh, chipsets and so on. You could have BGAs in terms of wire bond tab or flip chip and I have emphasized in the module on printed circuit board technology that the build up technology is highly essential for these kind of high density packages. So, here again I have presented to you the cross section of a BGA where you could see the high density interconnect substrate HDI and then you have the BGA solder balls. Okay, so, this is a BGA solder ball and then the various components like the encapsulant and so on. Um, coming back chip size packaging or chip scale packaging is basically when the package area is no greater than 1.2 times that of the die area when the ball pitch is equal to or less than 0.5 mm. Usually it is a flip chip attachment and you could work with laminate or ceramic substrates. Cooling is a very important issue and basically a package must, must transport heat from the IC to the environment that is the main concern of uh, packaging in terms of uh, uh, thermal design and the heat removed from the package is basically by air natural air flow or a forced air flow improved by mounting a heat sink on top of the package or attaching a fan on the printed circuit board to remove the air quickly from the surface of the device. Okay. So, in the heat sinks also you could have various configurations of heat sink basically to increase the surface area of the heat sink, uh, use the appropriate material like aluminum or modified uh, oxides of aluminum and then try to provide large surface area to remove the heat 
from the surface of the die or the package. Now, the PCB material itself could be used as a uh, if chosen correctly a material to remove heat from the package the solder joint to the external environment. So, um, as a designer you must be able to understand the properties of uh, PCB materials for efficient PCB design involving thermal issues. But in the case of uh, large systems, um, a few companies have even attempted liquid cooling although it is going to be pretty expensive. So, basically as far as the packages are concerned you are interested in the following parameters. The first one is the substrate material, you could use organic here FR4 or uh, BT epoxy, ceramic, polymer material or no substrate in, in, in the case of a um, resin package where you do not typically have uh, a lead frame or something like that to hold the die. Then you have the die attach material. In the case of a no substrate typically um, if you take a dip package you will have a base substrate with the lead frame, but then you can avoid this using a organic resin molded type of a um, fabrication. In the case of a die attached material or process you could have a cavity up process where you can see the die here the configuration or a cavity down. So, accordingly the substrate is um, fabricated so that you can provide uh, avenues for cavity down attachment of the die and then you could have a stacked die configuration. Then the other issue is the die to package interconnection could be a wire bond or a flip chip um, tab is less common the volumes are less. Then you have the package to PCB interconnection where you could have leads or pins like a PGA balls like a BGA or a CSP or no leads typically a QFN kind of a package. Then the other issue is encapsulation whether you are going to use a glop top epoxy material over molded package formation or hermetic sealing which is required for certain applications. The current issue is 3D packaging or stack tie formation to improve the IO count uh, in a smaller area and uh, vertically integrating um, large number of die it could be different functionalities built on a single substrate or platform and then interconnected uh, along the periphery between various dies and then they could have a common package. Okay. So, typically you could have um, single chip module uh, multi chip packages stacked together, but stacked in a single package. It supports wire bond flip chip die attachment and uh, you could have a hybrid combination of flip chip and wire bond as um, we have seen in the lectures various illustrations and photographs. Packaging applications it could be used for CSP uh, stacked CSP or a stacked BGA or a package on package or a folded over package and these are highly integrated so that they are used in handheld products uh, wireless handsets and so on. We have also talked about multi chip modules as compared to single chip modules um, here on a common substrate you have various die okay, mounted and interconnected um, and then they function together as a system building block. right? So, the IOs also will be large in the case of a multi chip module and the requirement is that you could mount this just like a single chip module on a system level printed wiring board or a ceramic substrate as the case may be and special circuit requirements can be met by integrating large number of die on the same substrate. Um, ideally you could do away with uh, various single chip modules or packages. Um, the individual dies can be different functionalities also. The other concept we have seen is a system in package uh, which is defined as the vertical stacking of similar or dissimilar ICs in contrast to the horizontal nature of a um, system on a chip. 
or a multi chip module again which is uh, uh, requiring more area on the substrate. So, you talk about vertical stacking in a system in package. About 30 IC and packaging companies are producing SIP modules. So, to summarize the initial chapters, current trends is uh, 3D packaging, build up substrates, flip chip, direct chip attach, system in package and uh, towards the end of this course we talked about green manufacturing. Okay. So, as a designer uh, you should also think about removing lead from your assembly and try to use new materials, look for new concepts in uh, plating uh, or die attached materials and so on. Remember these three important terms design for manufacturing, design for reliability and design for testability. Um, during the CAD section of this uh, video course, I have highlighted the importance of these terms. Why do you require a good handshake between the designers and the manufacturers? But if you do not have a proper understanding at the design stage itself about the manufacturing issues, you are going to end up with bottlenecks in manufacturing and sometimes impossible specs would be um, sent to the manufacturer which cannot be designed and that is going to eat up the cost of the evolution of a product. Reliability again related to various things right from the product conceptualization, uh, material analysis that goes into the end product, the how the materials will behave in different conditions, um, electrical and thermal included and then comes the point of testability. Your design is no good if you do not have a layout that is testable and the type of packages that you are choosing uh, are very key to defining this uh, concept of design for testability. Here I have a picture of uh, um, a finished layout from a CAD process at a very simple double sided structure and then you can see how a board is made from this particular design using various uh, printed circuit board processes. I have tried to highlight to you the importance of the various segments in a CAD program. Whatever be the CAD program that you are using, uh, you have to look at optimizing various operations in CAD. Okay. You may be using a through hole technology or a surface mount technology. Look at various issues that are available in your CAD. Uh, the library management and then the various optimization issues like via optimization, routing optimization, various design parameters that need to be set and so on. Also spend a lot of time on how you are going to generate post processing files for fabrication and assembly. So, this is an example of a schematic which is now converted to a final Gerber file electrical layer which is very key to being sent for the fabrication of the um, system level printed wiring board. So, your system level printed wiring board could be 2 layers or 16 layers or 32 layers and for each of these layers you have to have the required Gerber file for electrical solder mask, legend print, um, various other issues like ground, um, vias and so on. So, mask fabrication or tool uh, photo tool making um, is a key area in uh, defining the reliability of your system. Very briefly we have seen subtractive process in the manufacturing where etching is the key process, how well you define or remove copper. Then we talked about plating as a major step in adding copper okay, to for example, creating a microvia layer using electroless plating followed by electroplating and then you have the semi additive process. This is the process flow chart of a double sided manufacturer starting from the design to the emphasis on electroless plating followed by electroplating protecting the copper and so on. We have also seen how multi layer boards can be made using 
laminated multilayer structures where you stack separately made layers double sided and then stack them into a mono block in a multilayer press and then build the number of layers and finally interconnect the top and bottom layer to get what is known as a conventional method of making multilayer boards. Then you have what is known as the HDI manufacturing or process where sequentially you add layer by layer onto a core substrate. The arrangement could be um, asymmetric that means you could have two build up layers on top one at the bottom and then typically it is done by um, building step by step various layers by the semi additive process or a fully additive process where high density designs can be incorporated. The methods of formation of via become very critical in building your HDI board. We have seen different methods the more easy is the photo via formation by photolithography then comes the laser drilling uh, methodology which is now being practiced by many industries which has become affordable compared to 10 years ago and then you have the plasma edge to create a micro via process. To me the most common and cost effective today is laser drilling. There are limitations with the photo via process in terms of the um, micro via sizes that could be generated essentially because of the light source intensity and then then also the type of uh, photo resist material that is now available for such a process. Today you have uh, equipments available in the market to drill a microvia without a mask okay, directly onto uh, a substrate photo resist. So this is the summary of a sequential build up process where you can see quickly at a glance that how you can coat a dielectric of your choice onto an already existing board and then build microvias structures which can be used to interconnect to your earlier built up layer and then you can do metallization of the individual microvias. This is a parallel process. So the volumes uh, in manufacturing uh, yield could be very high and then you can build additional layers at the top or at the bottom to increase the number of layers. Having seen the PCB technology we also saw what is a flex circuit. Flex circuit volumes definitely are larger but the concentration um, of this segment is limited to certain areas um, precision areas like medical electronics, um, aerospace, uh, engine controls and so on cameras which is highly in the handheld equipment segment. So um, we have um, covered some of the important areas in flex circuits, the design requirement for flex circuits, the fabrication sequences and methodologies for flex circuits and some issues like what, what should be the bend radii for a multilayer flex or single sided flex and so on. Later we have moved into the surface mount device technology or surface mount assembly technology. The summary from SMT processes is that you are going to attach components to the system level printed wiring board that you have built and there could be a situation where we are going to look at various component types. It could be a through hole component, a surface mount device or it could be an advanced package like a BGA, CSP or a QFN and so on. So what are the methods to assemble them? Typically and very generally you have to dispense a media material that will hold your component in place. So component placement comes next uh, typically using a pick and place equipment. Then the media is uh, soft cured or fully cured depending upon the assembly process or the soldering process that follows. Then comes the important step that is the soldering or the attachment or joining of the components using solder material. Then the cleaning of the joints and then testing. Wave soldering is um, a technology where you are going to add solder okay, from a molten bath um, which contains solder material various solder materials 
uh, tin lead typically although the usage of uh, tin lead is diminishing as you know. So, here the summary is adhesive application pick and place the component cure the adhesive which holds the component and then use a flux and then wave solder. In the reflow soldering process uh, application of solder paste is the first step either by screen printing, syringe or stencil printing then follows the pick and place um, methodology of the component tacky cure to um, hold the component using the adhesive that is there in the solder paste reflow soldering by either infrared reflow thermal convection hot air vapor phase reflow and followed by clean and test. And we have spent a lot of time on the various issues that um, the soldering process could be faced with in terms of the uh, individual processes like pick and place or the application of the solder paste whether it is by stencil, syringe dispensing and so on. And we listed the kind of failures that one can expect. So, I am trying to highlight or recap some uh, two or three important failures that could be observed during SMD assembly. The first one is the tombstoning or the skewing. Um, we have seen an exhaustive list of the failures library in that particular module. So, here this is basically to highlight um, the light weight of the components like your chip components that can have um, problems during reflow soldering especially because the temperatures could be unequal at the different sites that you are seeing here in this picture of the chip component or the material not being pure in terms of the components and then the volume of the material that you have dispensed also could be unequal. And the other important issue is the atmosphere in which the reflow soldering process has taken place either in air or in nitrogen atmosphere. Because BGA is being used in uh, uh, large numbers today failures are bound to happen uh, during assembly of BGAs. So, look for failures especially the popcorning effect or the delamination and also because the dies uh, attachment of the BGA the solder ball attachment cannot be viewed by the uh, normal microscopes you have to use uh, x-ray micrograph and see the uh, whether there is a die crack or a popcorning effect or simply important um, uh, issues like unequal solder paste dispensing creating in for example, the areas that you see here in the middle where you are not sure whether it is a wet joint or um, a reliable joint because of low solder volume that has solder paste volume that has been dispensed. So, look for um, inspection. So, inspection of BGA during assembly becomes very important. Look for these defects and qualify your BGA uh, attachment process. The soldering process is complex. We have seen the issues like temperature profile setting uh, which is a major uh, task when you set up a reflow equipment for a particular uh, batch of BGA assembly or surface mount assembly. Okay. So, you might use a different substrate for different batches. Look at the TG of the substrate, look at the solder paste melting point and then set your thermal profile accordingly also have an idea about what temperature you are going to work with and there are various zones as we have seen preheat, soaking, reflow and so on and involve yourself uh, for a large amount of time in setting the thermal profile correctly by doing a number of trial and error runs and then if it is a large volume manufacturing you have to maintain these standards uh, and also the same set of materials for the entire product. The alternatives for lead is very important because lead is being phased out. We are looking at lead free electronics. Tin is a problem because of whiskers and therefore, alternatives for lead could be simply SAC 305 alloy 
or SAC405 alloy. So typically large percentage of tin is used with the small percentage of uh, silver and copper. The reason for adding silver we have seen it provides uh, better mechanical strength, improves resistance to fatigue from thermal cycles. Um, copper lowers the melting point, improves the resistance to thermal cycle fatigue and improves the wetting properties. There are other materials also available. Which leads us to the problem, a major problem in the electronics industry today, industry today uh, that is green electronics. As designers and as fabricators, uh, you have to get involved in contributing your bit to the um, green environment. So, whether it is design or supply of components and raw materials, IC packaging, IC assembly, board assembly, um, board fabrication and so on, you have to look at the right usage of materials. Then the other development in packaging, systems packaging which I have highlighted towards the end of this course is the concept of embedded passives. We have seen what through hole resistors are and then what these capacitors are. Then we also seen what a surface device, a surface mount device could mean in um, re-engineering your product. Surface mount device and through hole component have different assembly technologies that needs to be considered in your design. Therefore, if you are using a mixture of hybrid, mixture of uh, through hole and surface mount devices, look at your assembly process very carefully so that your board is not subjected to thermal shock uh, unreasonably because you are going to end up with reliability issues from the board side as well as the component side. Now to overcome these kind of issues, the embedded passives came in a, a big way and we have spent some time on looking at the fundamentals of embedded resistors. Uh, embedded capacitors, the basic equations that govern resistors, resistivity, sheet resistivity and the basic equation governing capacitances. So, if you look at this illustration here, what you are basically seeing is active devices on an organic substrate and then the inner layers are used for resistors and capacitors and then you have the micro vias being used to typically connect various layers of a multi-layer organic substrate. The electrical and thermal issues have been covered in this uh, course on packaging. What are the electrical issues that have been reviewed? We have looked at basic interconnections, copper interconnections in a printed wiring board. Okay. We are not discussing interconnections at the chip level, the VLSI issues. We are looking at copper interconnections between components okay, or between various uh, uh, devices on a system level printed wiring board. What are the is issues considering the line width or the copper width that is being used for various uh, segments. It could be a ground line, a signal line, uh, a power supply line. Therefore, what are the considerations as a designer you have to take care of at the interconnections uh, design stage. Once your schematic uh, is ready, you are going to spend a lot of time on understanding or simulating the parasitic effects that could be there on your system level printed wiring board like R, C and L. And then the effect of temperature on the system, the current flow, conductor width assessment for a ground plane, a signal line and so on. How do you calculate them? What is the basis for calculating we have seen? And issues in high frequency and fast switching systems, high speed digital circuit design briefly. Thermal issues, uh, the basic heat transfer concepts like um, uh, that is required for a very general understanding of any product. 
how is heat dissipated from the dye to the external environment ambient, modes of heat transfer, conduction, convection and radiation, cooling techniques, concept of thermal resistance in a circuit, failure modes expected in electronic equipment and heat sinking methods whether it is a passive or a active methodology. We have seen briefly materials and process issues in packaging like the choice of materials in various segments right starting from the IC packaging or uh, the materials used in the IC package itself whether it is a plastic package or a ceramic package the host of materials that are being used today practiced today and what are the properties end properties of these uh, packages. Uh, the IC assembly here again the various materials used in IC assembly. Then we talk about system level packaging that is the boards, board substrate, we talk about uh, the interconnections using solder material, uh, again board assembly uh, using lead free material and so on. Properties of prime importance to a designer, what you should consider should be electrical issues thermal issues, mechanical and chemical all are very important for a designer. Processes um, thick film, thin film and PWV technologies need to be understood uh, if you want to consider different choices for different application areas. A very cost effective one would be your printed wiring board, but if you are going to build um, systems where cost is not of uh, the prime concern then you can look at alternatives like a thick film or a thin film process. Thick film would be using some kind of a hybrid circuitry where you are going to embed conductors, resistors, capacitors and so on and then co-fire them at uh, different temperatures like a LTCC process or a HTCC process. Therefore, finally having covered having seen all these topics the time has come to ask this question is packaging an academic subject. What are the levels at which packaging should be taught as an academic subject? Earlier it was believed that packaging is a component um, that is required to be learnt by the engineer in the industry and industry engineers were being trained in various aspects of packaging and that took a lot of time. But today uh, it has been realized that packaging needs to be taught to engineers at a very early stage typically at the undergraduate level and that is one of the reasons why this course is being aimed for the undergraduate students in the, um, in the country. Therefore, we are looking at universities to adopt electronic systems packaging uh, for undergraduate students um, midway during their course so that they can think about a career in electronic systems packaging it could be electrical thermal it could be uh, basic electrical design issues or manufacturing issues and so on uh, once they finish their graduation. So the frequently asked questions are the questions that you might want to ask at this stage uh, is is packaging an academic subject yes the way the trend is the way the uh, requirement even at the university level where students design very complex systems you require to look at packaging and they need to understand the various uh, components in uh, all the three levels of packaging. The benefits from this course what is expected is that the undergraduate students as well as the graduate students would be sensitized to the various segments in this um, large multidisciplinary area of packaging and you can once you get into the industry it will be very easy for you to adapt yourself to the industry in whatever field you are working with. So the extension of this course could be either you can attend a workshop or a training specializing in certain specific topics in packaging and then once you enter the industry you will 
definitely be involved in product design and there you can implement the packaging aspects very effectively. So, the other question is how do I get into specific topics in packaging after this uh, introductory course. So, in the beginning I have given you a lot of uh, reference books um, that talk about system level packaging. There are a lot of handbooks uh, especially the system on package handbooks uh, that are being available in the um, libraries today. So, you can easily pick up your uh, specific topic that you would need to and then explore the specific uh, topic in detail. Finally, I would like to thank uh, NPTEL um, this national level course um, that supports education uh, in a very large um, size in terms of the number of people going through this web course. I would like to thank NPTEL for supporting this course um, for the undergraduate students and the graduate students and I would like to thank the participants uh, in this course who have um, gone through this entire lecture modules and uh, gone through the various um, quizzes and the assignments and the questions that are given in this particular web course. So, for your uh, benefit um, in this module, in this uh, video course, you can go through various assignments that are being posted specific to the various segments in this web course and other relevant documents like glossary of packages which is a um, very good compendium of all the types of packages, the abbreviations and the acronyms are being listed. You can go through that and other relevant reading material like reference textbooks and so on are also listed which can be extended by you for uh, uh, increasing your um, understanding in this particular topic. So, if you have any queries on these specific topics, it can be mailed, emailed uh, to me at the email given here and I wish to um, thank all the participants once again and I would like to wish you all the best in your future endeavors and hope you can apply packaging somewhere either in academics, research or in the industry that you will be getting into. Thank you.